Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Chắc trong thời gian gần đây các bạn đều biết về thông tin là nhiều công ty tập đoàn quốc tế trong đó có một số cái tên lớn đang tiến hành đầu tư vào Việt Nam trong bối cảnh dịch chuyển đầu tư do ảnh hưởng của nhiều yếu tố trong đó có đại dịch Covid-19. Và chắc mọi người có đọc được về sự kiện tuyển dụng lao động cho nhà máy sản xuất tay nghe của Apple tại Bắc Giang hay Qualcomm, tập đoàn sản xuất bộ vi xử lý cho các thiết bị di động, viễn thông vừa thành lập phòng thí nghiệm tại trung tâm Hà Nội để sản xuất chipset 5G. Cùng với những tin tức này thì chúng ta cũng được biết về những cuộc thảo luận xung quanh vấn đề nguồn nhân lực để đón làn sóng đầu tư này. Điều này làm chúng ta liên tưởng đến Ireland. Ireland là một hòn đảo ở Tây Bắc của châu Âu. Trong quá khứ, Ireland đã từng là thuộc địa của Vương quốc Anh trong vòng 700 năm. Ireland cũng đã trải qua cuộc cách mạng giành độc lập. Đến đầu thế kỷ 20, Ireland đã trở thành nước Cộng Hòa. Như vậy ta có thể thấy lịch sử Ireland có phần nào đó tương đồng với lịch sử Việt Nam. Tuy nhiên, cho đến thời điểm tham gia EU vào năm 1973, Ireland vẫn còn là một trong những nước nghèo nhất châu Âu. 40 năm sau, vào thập niên 2000, Ireland đã trở thành một trong những nước có thu nhập đầu người cao nhất châu Âu. Ở giai đoạn đó, đất nước này được gọi là con hổ keo tích. Vậy, nghe đến đây tất cả mọi người đều sẽ có chung một câu hỏi là nguyên nhân là gì vậy? Có rất nhiều người khi đến thăm Ireland đều có câu hỏi như vậy. Nhờ đâu mà Ireland lại có thể chuyển mình một cách thần kỳ như vậy? Trong khuôn khổ thời gian có hạn thì câu trả lời ngắn gọn là do sự đầu tư vào các ngành công nghệ cao, cụ thể hơn là vào giáo dục và nghiên cứu trong những lĩnh vực công nghệ cao. Nhờ đó Ireland có thể tạo ra nguồn lao động có trình độ và kỹ năng nhằm đáp ứng nhu cầu của các tập đoàn hàng đầu thế giới. Cụ thể là bà Sheryl Sandberg, giám đốc vận hành của Facebook đã cho biết rằng chúng tôi đến Ireland là vì lực lượng lao động có kỹ năng và trình độ cao. Đến đây thì chúng ta cũng sẽ đặt câu hỏi là những điều này có ý nghĩa gì đối với mỗi cá nhân hay là đối với mỗi sinh viên Việt Nam? Đối với mỗi người thì những thông tin này sẽ giúp chúng ta đánh giá xem liệu ở một nền giáo dục có những chương trình đào tạo các ngành công nghệ có chất lượng cao như vậy. Nếu chúng ta lựa chọn làm điểm đến du học của mình thì có thể giúp bản thân chúng ta trở nên cạnh tranh hơn trong thị trường lao động, mở ra nhiều cơ hội trong tương lai cho bản thân như thế nào. Như đã nói ở phần đầu, trong bối cảnh có nhiều nhà đầu tư đang dịch chuyển đầu tư sang Việt Nam chúng ta thì chúng ta cần trang bị cho mình những kiến thức, kỹ năng gì để trong tương lai có thể tận dụng được những cơ hội tuyển dụng hấp dẫn đó. Để giúp các bạn sinh viên học sinh có thể đưa ra sự lựa chọn về ngành học để định hướng cho bản thân, từ tuần này trở đi, vào tối thứ năm, Education in Ireland Việt Nam sẽ launch một chuỗi các bài giảng trực tuyến với các giảng viên, giáo sư từ trường đại học và các học viện công nghệ Ireland. Mở đầu cho talk series này, hôm nay chị xin giới thiệu thầy Liam Ryan và cô Tabia Deville. Thầy Liam Ryan thì chắc nhiều bạn ở Việt Nam đã biết rồi, thầy phụ trách phòng quốc tế đại đại, tại Đại học Limerick, còn tiến sĩ Tabia Deville là giảng viên của khoa khoa học máy tính và hệ thống công, thông tin. Và theo thông tin từ một số bạn sinh viên Việt Nam tại Ireland thì cô là một giáo sư rất giỏi. Chính vì vậy mà chị chắc chắn rằng buổi nói chuyện hôm nay sẽ rất là hấp dẫn và lý thú. Trong suốt thời gian bài giảng, các bạn có bất kỳ câu hỏi gì? Hãy sử dụng phần bình luận. Các thầy cô ở Đại học Limerick cũng như Team Education in Ireland Việt Nam sẽ trả lời những thắc mắc của các bạn. Còn bây giờ đầu tiên chúng ta sẽ cùng gặp gỡ thầy Liam Ryan. Well, uh, good morning Liam and Tabia. Thank you for joining to uh, Education in Ireland Vietnam talk series number one. Uh, 
Now I would like to uh, ask Liam to uh, start the presentation. Perfect, and a, a huge thank you to Education in Ireland for giving us this opportunity. Um, I will do a, a short introduction on the University of Limerick uh, before passing to my colleague Tabia, who will speak more specifically on computer science uh, in Ireland. So a very warm welcome to the University of Limerick. Um, UL, as we like to call it, uh, is a public uh, government university in Ireland. Uh, it is ranked in the top 100 young universities in the world. Um, and we're particularly well known for two things. So uh, last year we were rated number one uh, in the world for international student experience. So that is the quality of life on campus, the enjoyment in terms of the, 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 the social activities and interaction. Um, and then the second thing that we focus on um, is graduate employability uh, and career preparation. So we put a huge amount of work into making sure that our uh, programs are uh, industry, industry informed um, and, and aimed at specific uh, job markets and, and so on. And Tabia will cover a little bit on that. We're also quite an affordable university. So our average cost of living plus tuition is around 17,000 euros per year, uh, which is, is quite affordable compared to uh, some of the other uh, institutions in Australia, USA and so on. In terms of Ireland, uh, our location um, is we're, we're the nearest neighbor to the United Kingdom. Uh, we're an English speaking country in Europe, uh, just off the west coast of mainland Europe. Um, and then we are based in Limerick, which is the third largest city in Ireland. So we have about 16,000 students uh, and of which there is about 3,000 international students from over 100 nationalities. So quite a diverse uh, and international university. Um, we're about one hour by plane from, from London, uh, which gives you an idea of, of our location. Uh, and we're, we have a couple of international airports close by for access. I think any, any summary at the moment um, you know, needs to cover COVID-19 COVID and, and the current pandemic crisis. Uh, Ireland has been very successful in dealing with the, with the, the, the pandemic. Uh, we had a very early uh, and complete lockdown. Uh, with the universities shutting on the 12th of March. Um, as you can see from the background, I'm still, still working from home at the moment, um, and our plan is to open the campuses back up uh, at the end of September. So Ireland has uh, approximately 800 active cases at the moment. Um, we've had been very successful in flattening the curve, and, and there's quite a significant plan in place in terms of uh, ensuring the, 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 the continued uh, control of the pandemic. So we've had a quite, a, quite a strong response there. Um, we also have been very supportive of our international students who have come to Ireland. Uh, so they have um, options to have a, an international uh, student payment uh, if they've lost part-time jobs, which is around 1,400 euros per month. Uh, we've also changed our visa, uh, visa processes to make things easier for international students while they're here. From the University of Limerick's perspective, uh, we plan to open on the 28th of September. Um, there will be a mixture of online and face-to-face -face teaching. Uh, so depending on the type of program people are studying, uh, larger classes where social distancing isn't possible will happen online. And then some of the labs and tutorial type teaching uh, will happen as normal face-to-face -face, um, on campus. We also are offering students to, to start their programs online uh, to defer their programs or to, to, to get a full refund as well. So we are being quite flexible and making sure that students who come to us um, are as safe as, as possible. We're a comprehensive university, so we have uh, four large faculties and which within that there is 19 different schools. Uh, we will hear specifically from the School of Computer Science and Information Systems from Tabia. Um, but we, we do have uh, bachelor's, master's and PhD programs across, uh, across all areas. Uh, what makes UL distinctive? Uh, so one of the key, key things that uh, is, is, is unusual and distinctive about the University of Limerick is we have the largest internship program in Europe. So all students at undergraduate level do a, an eight month internship program. Uh, so that is organized by the university. It's in a company related to their field of studies uh, and it gives them an opportunity to apply the theory that they've been learning uh, into practice. 
Um, as I mentioned, we have a fantastic student experience record and we do a lot of work on supporting our students that come, come to Limerick, uh, making sure that they're integrated, they have friends, they have activities to, uh, to do outside of the classroom as well as providing supports inside the classroom. Um, we have a number of industry collaborations, so we have over 2,000 uh, industry partners that we have our internships with. Um, Ireland is uh, quite lucky in the, in the, 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 the COVID crisis uh, in that a number of the, the large uh, companies that are based here um, are, are hugely involved in the fight against COVID. So uh, we have a huge number of pharmaceutical companies, medical device companies, um, computer science companies, as Tabia will mention, um, that are busier now than, than they were before the, the, the global pandemic. Um, so it is, it is a, a global hub for these type of industries, pharma, um, medical devices, and so on. So we, we have seen it, a huge number of these companies um, continue to hire uh, and have extra demand for, for, for talent at the moment. So um, actually the OECD, which is kind of a, a global um, organization for economic cooperation, uh, identified Ireland as the, um, the most resilient economy to COVID-19 as a result of our, uh, our economics. Just the last little bit about, about UL. Um, so we have fantastic campus accommodation. So we have um, uh, around 4,000 spaces on campus for, for student living. Uh, a lot of those are, are, um, are reserved for our international students. Uh, the cost is between four and 6,000 euros per year. And we have um, living live managers, 24 hour security. We also will be pr providing um, a two week self isolation period uh, on campus for, for students who come to Ireland. Um, and that is the availability is there at the moment for, for students. So just a very short summary of UL. Um, you can expect a fantastic student experience. Uh, Ireland and UL has a, a safe and strong COVID response. So we've, we've been very uh, strong in terms of ensuring, um, ensuring the uh, control of, of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, we are offering online starts, uh, late starts, and also um, uh, on-campus uh, teaching as, as, as usual. Uh, the, the, the programs are high quality, they're industry focused, and most of them include internships uh, or work experience. Um, and it's affordable and, and high quality. So we try and make, make the international experience as accessible as possible to our international students. And now to introduce uh, our, our main speaker. Uh, so Dr. Tabia Deville uh, will talk you through computer science opportunities in, in Ireland. Um, thank you very much, Liam. Thank you for the introduction. And I would also like to um, thank Education in Ireland um, for the opportunity to present to you today. So as Liam mentioned, I am Tabia Deville. I am a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science and Information Systems. I have prepared a presentation for you on computer science in, in, in general. Um, and also I'm going to show you the different aspects of computer science that you might want to consider and which of them we actually offer at our university. And I will also talk to you a little bit about um, the industry in Ireland and how we actually make sure that um, computer science students are successful in their careers in the future. So computer science, you probably have some sort of idea that it has probably to do with computers, right? I mean, you all use a computer, if you're a little bit like me, the very first thing in the morning is usually checking the phone, right? Having a look at Facebook, um, saying hello to the family on WhatsApp, checking emails and so on. And then the next thing that um, I have been doing today is I'm now at, at my laptop. I'm recording this presentation for you and um, <clears throat> on my laptop. So you probably use these kind of computers as well. Now you might think that this is all there is to computer science, but actually if we think about the rest of my morning, there are many, many other things that have involved computer science already. So one of the things that I did in the morning was a, uh, was a quick workout. Now what, what does that have to do with computer science? Well, for one, I use a Fitbit. A Fitbit is a little tiny computer that actually interacts with my laptop and my phone and records it. It also has some prediction. It has some data science in there. There is a little bit of artificial intelligence in there. So it's actually a very sophisticated computer. I also use a website that actually tells me um, my, my workout every morning and I stream that on my smart TV, right? So there is a lot of computer science involved in there. After an exercise, of course, you need to take a shower. 
right, what does a shower have to do with computer science? Well, in my house, the water temperature is, co is controlled with an automatic thermostat. So the water temperature of my, my shower, my heating system and all that, we have a mini computer that actually controls all these things. Um, we have, um, I I even in the cup of tea that I had after my shower, there is computer science involved there. For example, the tea itself came from a country not in Ireland. We don't grow tea in Ireland, of course. It's too cold for tea. But um, we actually ship the tea over from China or from India or, or some other Asian country usually. And for that, we need logistics. And logistics systems today um, run on very sophisticated platforms where they help people understand what is the most efficient way of loading their ships, for example, um, where is the load, um, they help them plan, they help them actually calculate the, 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 the ways of being efficient and cost efficient and so on. But even the milk in my tea had some computer science involved. I don't know if you know this, but in a lot of agriculture, there is very sophisticated artificial intelligence involved today where you would have a machine predicting, you know, which cow needs milking next, that they would actually record the, um, you know, how much milk they actually supply. Therefore, they can actually understand whether the cow is doing well. They also monitor any medication that the cow needs and so on. So these are very sophisticated systems all of, in, in all of agriculture. Um, here in Ireland, but also in other countries worldwide that use computer science and use very sophisticated artificial intelligence. And these are also areas that a lot of my colleagues um, in the department conduct research on if you're interested in, in very sophisticated systems like this. And then finally, one of the things that many of you maybe do, maybe you need to take a medication or a vitamin in the morning, even here computer science is involved because all of these medications were tested for um, for their efficacy, but they were also tested for safety. So the laboratories that do this, they they use computers, they use systems that actually make sure that um, all the components are safe and that the, the 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 formulation is safe. So and this is just um, this is just computer science as far as my morning is concerned. I mean, let's not even talk about the rest of the day, right? So what is it actually that we do in computer science? I mean, we have, um, of course, computers and computer systems. Um, and what we actually try to do in computer science at all times is that we look at problems and we try to solve them in a better, faster and more efficient way. So what I mean with being better, faster and more efficient would be something like the example that you can see here on that picture where this is an example also from artificial intelligence and this system is detecting whether the object in front of you is a is another car is a person is a traffic light and so on and this is an important step when it comes to self-driving cars now self-driving cars are sometimes a little bit controversial but the idea behind them is that we would like to be in a position where Trucks, for example, that ship around my tea and my milk for my breakfast um, actually don't have to be driven by humans anymore, but they can actually be driven by machines and humans help the machines, right? Or the other way around, the machine helps the human, which, whichever way you want to look at it. And this is interesting because actually driving a truck is a very boring task and it takes very long time and many accidents happen because of that. People get very tired and then they don't have enough attention anymore. So the hope is that if you have a, a system helping the human with these tasks, then there are fewer, um, fewer accidents, but it's also more efficient because the human can do other things while, while this machine is actually doing this. And this is the principle in a lot of the things that we do in computer science. Another thing that we try to do is understanding the world around us. So if you think, for example, you are a political candidate and you want to understand what do people think of you on Twitter, right? How can you actually do this? You can either just go on Twitter and you can spend the next five days, you know, searching for your name and reading all the tweets, right? That is very, very boring and it takes a very long time to do but we want to be better, faster, and more efficient in computer science. And therefore we use actually, again, an artificial intelligence technique or, or natural language processing technique rather, 
called sentiment analysis. And what we do there is we summarize all the tweets that were said about you, and this can happen very, very quickly. And then you get a report and they say, okay, 70% of the people on Twitter love you. They think you are fantastic, you have great policies, and the other 30%, they have some concerns, and here are some of the concerns they might have. So we want to understand what is happening around us and we want to use that as an input in order to then actually again solve problems in a better way. So overall we are trying to help with boring and hard tasks. Um, anything that a machine can do um, for that, that a human is currently doing, the idea is that we can therefore free up the human to do other things, right? The humans can be creative, they can invent new things, they can do the, the difficult things that the machines are currently not able to do. So this is applied in many different domains and I, I'm just listing a few of them. I already man mentioned health. There is a lot of different things happening in, in health and computer science, even in our department, where there are monitoring systems, for example, that help older people um, be safe by, by monitoring whether they have fallen down, for example, right? They, you, can, you can detect whether a person is standing upright or is on the floor. There's entertainment. We do video games uh, development in our department. Um, there is music. Even in, in movies, there are many different aspects that involve computer science or the computer generated graphics and a lot of the audio. I mentioned transportation. Um, already as logistics, but um, even just, you know, taking a bus to work or taking, you know, um, taking a train or, or an airplane all involves computer systems, finance and banking. Um, there's a lot of security involved in there, but there's also predicting financial markets, um, communication systems, even the fact that I'm talking to you right now, that um, involves a computer system and of course energy and energy conservation. So the nice thing about computer science as an area is that it doesn't really matter what your interest is, what you, are, what you want to do in terms of making the world better or in terms of earning a lot of money or whatever domain you're interested in, um, you will find an area that, that might actually suit you. For example, I am originally a linguist. I have, I have um, studied theoretical linguistics and now I do computer science. I do a lot of work with analyzing um, the, the language of humans um, in, in, in that way. Now I want to talk about some of the programs that we are offering at the University of Limerick and you know some some of the idea to give you some ideas of what computer science um, areas that you might be interested in studying. So the first one is computer science common entry at the computer science and information systems department here, and that is a program that starts you off in the same year in year one, and then you branch out into three different programs for the remaining three years. And there you study different things. So one is computer systems. Um, which is basically um, computer science when a, with a lot of programming. Then there's computer games development, which is also um, computer science programming, but there is a strong focus on graphic elements as well, graphics programming. Um, and then there's also mobile development. Then we have um, in the um, in the computer games development, for example, you would have games modeling design, which is something that everyone does in the, in, in the common entry. But the idea here is that a lot of companies that we have in, the, in, in Ireland, for example, Jaguar Land Rover, they actually hire students from the games development program because of all the graphics programming they do. And if you look into very sophisticated systems in, compute, in, in, in cars today, they actually use a lot of the same things that, that video games do. So a lot of our students that do um, games development, they don't actually necessarily go into the video games industry, they go into other industries. And of course, also our computer systems students um, learn, learn a lot of these things. So in, in general, these students are very um, sought after and we have a very high employment rate um, of, of the students when they come out of these programs. Um, 
just some examples of what students are able to do um, after this program. The first is actually a game that, that a first year student did. So this was just after one year of study, he was able to develop a little game. And then quite interestingly, um, the Diet Assessor mobile app, this is a final year project. All our students do a final year project under the supervision of one of the lecturers here in the department. And there they actually do a, a project that is relat relatively sophisticated already and that is quite good to, to help them showcase what they're able to do. And in this particular um, instance, this is a, a diet assessor mobile app and I think it's a, such a great example of how computer science helps us do things faster and better and more efficiently. If you think about in the past when, when people wanted to go on a diet, what did they do? They had pen and paper and they had a nutritional table and everything they want they ate, right? They wrote it down on their pen and paper and then they had to actually look up their calories and calculate it and they had to look up, you know, their nutrients that they had and then they would write everything down in a table and then they would have to calculate all the things and then at the end of the day they knew how many calories they had eaten. Now the next generation of this kind of system has been apps that um, you might have seen for, for mobile phones where you do the same thing but you use an, an application on the phone and you basically enter everything that you eat and you weigh everything and then you actually um, get automatic calculation of calories and nutrients and so on. So this is already a great help, right? It's a lot more efficient because you don't have to do your own calculations and it will actually give you the result immediately so you can see what is happening as you go along. But it's still a little bit inconvenient because you still have to weigh your things and you still have to, to actually enter things automatically. So the next generation, which is the example here that the student developed, that uses artificial intelligence. And rather than having you having to weigh things and having to enter them manually, what you do is you take a picture of what it is that you want to eat. And here he uses his thumb as a comparison value, right? So you can actually see how big is that apple relative to the thumb. And because of that, the system is able to estimate how big is that apple and it can detect that it is an apple. And rather than you having to manually enter what it is that, that you have eaten, the system can now actually just, um, just detect that and enter it into, into the app for you. Now, this is, of course, early days for this kind of technology, but it's the kind of thing that our students are working on and um, you know, people in our department. So the other example I wanted to show you is the Creative Media and Interaction Design Common Entry. And this is um, a common entry into two different programs, Digital Media Design and Music Media and Performance Technology. And these programs are, um, have a lot of creative elements in there. So there would be an element of being able to actually create um, effects or, or, or design effects. Um, there would be music, there would be art created in there, but there is also a lot of um, elements in there in creating systems that are useful for humans and easy to use for them. And the question of how do humans interact with computers? And that is such an important thing to know and to understand and to be able to tell developers about because if you have ever used a system that was not well designed and it was very confusing, you didn't know where to click and you did, you know it wasn't actually intuitive in the way it, 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 it was set up, then you actually realize how much work goes into making systems that are intuitive. And a lot of systems are actually famous for being very easy to use uh, and, and, and they're also fun to use, right? You actually don't want to be put off by, by what it is that you're using in a system. So these courses are about that primarily. Um, and there are um, two examples that I've brought here from, from projects that the students were, were um, doing there. So one is a cycling app that is again a final year project. And this is in digital media design. And this student created an app that is connected to a smart jacket. So when, that, when you actually cycle around the city, it can detect where you are and it will tell you um, some, some points of interest on the route, right? So um, it actually helps us um, interact with the world around us in a more interesting way. And also it can be a, a good way of, of being safer and, and more efficient again. Um, the other example here is a digital painting, again, uh, from a final year student. And what's interesting about that 
it's digital and it actually reacts to the presence of the per person um, when that is viewing the painting. So this is a, a new way of doing art and the, the idea being that if we actually push the way we do art, then we can also look at that for entertainment and, and, and these kind of industries in the future. So there are some more examples that I just want to cover very briefly. I already talked about artificial intelligence previously um, in some examples with the sentiment analysis on Twitter and with the self-driving cars. We actually have um, several <coughs> programs, programs in artificial intelligence um, and we also um, teach some aspects of artificial intelligence in the other programs because it is such an important area these days. Um, so I probably don't have to tell you um, a, a, a lot about why it is so important, but basically what we are trying to understand in artificial intelligence is how we can train an engine to do a lot of the, the pattern recognition and do a lot of the difficult things that we need to do in computing automatically without actually having to manually input all the all the connections. So what you would have as an output would be some, some of the examples already mentioned, but even things like machine translation, I don't know if you travel to a different country, um, you might use a, a machine translation engine like Google Translate, for example, um, and that is that is actually a, a branch of, of machine learning and artificial intelligence there. So there is a very broad spectrum of different systems um, that are that are used there, and a lot of domains that are used. So there is even in the healthcare area, for example, we are there are some people working on detecting cancer cells. In, um, in slides that were taken of, of patients and rather than having um, humans needing to do that all by themselves, the, the engine can actually do these kind of detections and then they are verified by humans afterwards. There's data science. Data science is um, very strongly linked to mathematics and it's very interesting for finance and, and these kind of areas, but all businesses these days use data sciences. So even if you look at video games, for example, video games are in the business of, of entertaining people and they actually want to know what is entertaining for people. So they will record the interaction of their players with different features in the game, different areas in the game. And then they will analyze and see, okay, how long did they did they play that particular part and with whom and did they, did they have any problems that we can see in delays, for example, right? So a lot of these kind of areas would be covered by data science and there is just thousands of different examples from different industries where we understand how consumers interact with systems or even just, you know, where we understand, even just in the current COVID situation, data science is being used to understand um, many different things. So how do people um, interact with other humans and what are the patterns of, of spreading a virus there? But even just things like, how do they feel about the situation, right? What is their mental health and what is their physical health in, 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 in these challenging times? And, and, and looking at data to understand the, the patterns in, in, in bigger society, all of these different areas are part of data science. Then we have health informatics. I mentioned that a few times already. We also have programs for that here um, in the Computer Science and Information Systems Department. And what is important in health informatics, I mean, it is an application domain, um, just like many others, but health informatics, because it is a medical, it links to a medical field, you need to understand a lot about um, ethics, for example, and safety and, and what is actually important when, when dealing with, with humans and their physical health when it comes to technology. So there's many aspects of that involved in, in, in health informatics. Um, multi multilingual computing would be an area that I'm primarily in, and that is um, the area where you, you understand um, how, how human language um, works in technology, so things like machine translation, like I mentioned to you before, um, like the sentiment analysis that I said to you earlier, but when you want to understand what, what Twitter says about you, but even just things like um, understanding how to develop systems that are suitable for international markets. I don't know if you have experienced this, but sometimes there are systems that are developed in one country, let's say in the United States or in England or, or somewhere like this, and then they actually um, want to sell it in, in, in a different country, but they don't do it very well. 
right? The translations aren't very good and the icons don't work very well and the layout doesn't work for you and it's just not very appealing um, because it's from a different culture. So all of these different aspects from a technical all the way to a cultural aspect is all involved in multilingual computing. And then finally, an area that, that is also um, becoming more and more important is the computer science education field. A lot of secondary schools teach computer science now and this is no, new now in Ireland that secondary schools teach um, computer science. And this means that there are there is a need for qualified teachers in secondary schools. So understanding computer science, but also understanding how to teach it is, a, is, a, is an important field and also something you can study here with us. So um, all of this that I just talked to you about, it requires um, state of the art computer labs um, it, there is a lot of technology involved in video editing suites, um, prototyping labs, recording studios, audio, electronic labs, and so on. So it, all of this that, you know, of course you do a lot of it on a, on a, on a, on a computer, but there's also hardware involved. So we have a lot of these, these technologies. We have very dedicated labs. Um, and we also have exhibition and performance spaces for the students. So with those that are more the art artistic areas, um, they actually are able to exhibit their work and, and, and put on performances. So what might you actually do after a, a course like this? There are different kind of areas. If you actually are more on the computer systems and games development area, you can be a programmer, you can do web and application and game development, you can be business analyst, so that will be in the data science area, um, software designer, tester, architect, so these are all parts of the different parts of the process of, of actually de developing applications. Um, DevOps is part of release and project managers, um, they all need to, to work together in order to, to develop complex systems and make them useful for the, um, for the audience that they're trying to sell them to. Um, I have a few more other um, jobs on, on the list there, but for example, at the bottom you can see security consultant. Security consultants make sure that the company or the, the system is safe, right, because in today's world, there are many attacks on systems by hackers and viruses and so on. So a security consultant will specialize in that particular area. And on the right hand side, there are the jobs that are more in the arts and also in the human computer interaction. By human computer interaction, that what I mean with is that what I said earlier already, making sure that a system is actually use, usable by humans and easy to use and fun to use. So all of these areas in interaction design and usability and, and user research are, are in that particular area. So understanding human psyche and understanding what makes things fun and, and, and good for people. And then, of course, all the arts area, like sound and video air editor and sound engineer and so on. These starting salaries and these skills are quite good. So the average starting salaries are somewhere between 32 and 35,000, depending on the area. And about 10% of our graduates in the computer systems and computer games development area start at 45,000 um, per year. Now, very, very important in this is actually um, the fact that we have a very, very high employment rate from our graduate students. And this has also to do with the positioning of Ireland um, and the, the, the industry that we have here. A lot of the um, international organizations, international companies that you might recognize on this slide, like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and so on, have their European headquarters in Ireland. And um, this means that this is very attractive for our students because Ireland is not a very big country. You can actually go to any place in Ireland within a few hours. You can just take a bus and, and do an interview with Amazon in Cork or, or something like this, right? So a lot of the industries that, that, that you can see here that are either directly software or they are you know, using software. For example, Amazon have very sophisticated um, systems to actually handle their logistics and handle their recommendations for users. Johnson & Johnson, they are um, you know, in, 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 in pharmaceuticals, for example, or in, 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 in these kind of areas. They use very sophisticated systems themselves, but also video game companies like Romero Games and Electronic Arts or Jaguar Land Rover, which produce cars. But as I said earlier, it's very important for cars to actually have sophisticated computer systems these days in, in, in the cars themselves. 
So a lot of the students um, in our courses get hired by them um, or, uh, and, 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 and start very good jobs there um, quite, quite early on. And what is an important part of that is the co-op program. And what um, that means is that our students, they spend eight months in a, in a course related job in a business or industrial environment outside of the university. And I actually um, interact with a lot of those organizations, those companies that the students go to. And I, I talk to the managers there and I talk to the students there every year. And I'm always so impressed by what the students are able to do in these co-ops. They are always full part of the team. They, they, they work there. They love it. They, they learn so much just working hands on there. And it makes such a big difference for them to come back um, to to their their last year of the of the program because now they know actually what it is like to work in a company and they have actually had that experience of solving actual real life problems and to actually be um, productive in these kind of environments and a lot of the um, companies that their 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 co-ops do they actually end up hiring some of the students that did the co-op with them. I've had so many conversations with managers in the co-ops that said, oh, this student was so great. I'm going to speak to my manager and see if we can offer them a contract for after their studies. Yeah. So I would say the co-op is, is a very, very important part um, and very valuable to our undergraduate students here. The other thing that is very important to realize is that the, um, you know, a lot of the requirements that you that you have in computer science can be challenging for some students. For example, maths is, um, is, is a requirement in many of them. And this is some, sometimes a bit difficult for students to actually get on board with. And what we do for that is we support them with learning centers. So these are free and they can, students can just drop in at any time. They get one-to-one -one support, they can study by themselves um, and ask questions if they have problems and they're open to all the students um, on campus. And you can get support with science, maths, writing and research and your IT skills in those learning centers. So if you feel like you, you're lacking in one of these areas, then um, you, can, you can always you know, improve there. So finally, I wanted to discuss the question of whether computer science is for you. And the first thing I want to point you to is a YouTube playlist that I've put there. It's called, it's a computer science course for you by Lira Community. And there's also a short URL that you can follow. And that gives you a bit more of a presentation and some exercises that help you understand whether this is the area for you. But just very briefly, I would say, that there are some good and some not so good sites about computer science. So the first thing that I love is that it is a diverse and international environment. Um, a lot of people live in different countries and move all over the world um, in, in order to work in different countries. And it is usually no problem. A lot of the companies that work in this area are English speaking. Um, and that means also that you work with, a, with, with a, a diverse group of people. You have people working with you from all over the world. It's a popular area and very sought after. So if you are skilled in this area, then you usually will find it quite easy to find work um, in, in, in a company. And it is also quite well paid um, in, in, in that regard. So the other thing is that it is an interesting problem with a wide range of domains. I talked about this, um, this earlier, that you can actually solve so many problems that make um, things better and faster, more efficient that make our lives better um, and apply them to a different range of areas and it is always changing and evolving so computer science is not the same anymore today as it was in the in the 90s or or even just 10 or five years ago um, so you always have an opportunity to learn and to actually get better at new skills and expand your, your knowledge the things that are not so good that you might want to consider it's primarily desk work so there is not a lot of you know, walking around, there's not a lot of, there's some interaction with people, but it's certainly not as interactive with people as, for example, um, you know, working with, with children in a kindergarten would be or something like that, right? Um, it doesn't suit everyone. So not everyone actually enjoys solving these kind of problems. Not everyone enjoys learning about them. So you need to take a, a look at, um, I would suggest that YouTube playlist and see whether it's for you or, or just think about what kind of tasks you like to do. Do you like solving problems? Do you like improving systems? Then it probably works for you quite well. It can be a high pressure environment. So in some companies, depending on what it is, 
you know there are there are sometimes air times where you work you know longer hours or where you know it, it can be it can be a bit stressful to finalizing a project and then finally i have the always changing and evolving thing also as a not so good part because that of course depends on your perspective right some people don't actually want to keep learning and they don't want to keep expanding the horizon all these things so it really depends on what your own um, interests are and what you're willing to invest in in these kind of so thank you very much um, for listening to this presentation. If you would like to get in touch, you're very welcome to do so. Here's my email address at tabea.deville.ul.ie. And you can also find out more about our programs in computer science at this link that you can see here um, on the slide. Thank you. That was excellent, Tabea. Well done. I, 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 learned, I learned a lot myself even. Um, yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we have some questions from the uh, from the groups. Um, so, if if they, if someone studies computer science in Ireland, can they also learn about innovation and entrepreneurship? Um, so, they want to set up set up a company after graduation. Is is there some linkages there? Oh yeah, I mean there is certainly um, there is even in the university support. Um, for for these kind of things, we have um, commercialization office that helps with that. Um, there is, you know, you, you would want to probably understand the basics of what you're doing first, right? And maybe even work in a company before you do that. But yes, our, our we have had um, inouts from from the university in innovation and starting businesses for sure. So it's certainly an opportunity and also something you can get support from here. Yeah. And I know the, the Nexus Innovation Center has had some graduates who have gone on to uh, set, start up companies and set up companies within that as well. So it's, yes, it's been certainly. quite a good link. Um, okay, a, 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 a difficult question. Uh, can machine learning and AI end up doing all things for humans? <laughs> Well, I, I can't tell you what the future will bring, <laughs> um, but right now, no, but we don't even want to do that, right? There is actually a sliding scale between do we want to use AI and machine learning to help humans or do we want to replace humans? And right now, the goal is to help humans, right? And, and we actually, that is part of learning about AI is understanding how much control do you want to give the engine? and how many um, autonomous decisions do you want the engine to make for yourself, right? And in a lot of cases, no, the goal is not to do that because you, you, you need to make sure the system is trustworthy, but you also want to make sure that it actually doesn't have, you know, um, more, more power than it actually deserves to have, right? Because at the end of the day, it's still a mathematical system that might not be as smart as you would like it to be. That's a, a good, good answer. Um, uh, a, a question specifically for you then, uh, Dr. Tabia. So what made you change from linguistics to computer science? Hmm. I actually found that um, in, in particular, you see, as a linguist, I'm interested in, in how humans use language and how they actually interact with the world around them and how language you know, uh, makes their culture and, and makes their understanding of the world, how it influences that. And in today's world, this is just shaped so much by our, by our interactions with technology. So I, I'm very, very interested, for example, in minority languages and languages that are underrepresented on the internet, right? I mean, the vast majority of languages are not represented on the internet. And what we actually need to ask ourselves is what does that mean for inter for, for representation, what does that mean for um, social justice, and what does that mean for people's uh, ability to participate in international trade and international um, arts and entertainment and all these things. And because language is such an important part of culture, I wouldn't want it to be a world where you know, we can say, oh, we all need to speak English, and that is all there is, right? We need to be able to preserve the languages and preserve the cultures of the world while also having participation in technology, right? So for me, that you, the combination of technology and language is actually very obvious because of that, right? Because humans use language and humans use technology. That, that's what it was. 
fantastic and, and, and a, a very a very noble uh, cause I think to to to, uh, to to be involved in and I know it's it's something that um, is relevant both for Ireland and for Vietnam obviously uh, Vietnamese is um, uh, is probably underrepresented in terms of of the the internet uh, and it is a language that's accessible but only specifically really in the Vietnamese market um, and and Ireland, obviously, we all speak English, but we have an Irish language as well um, that's very difficult to find uh, websites and, and, and internet content and things like that on that. So like 100% agree, sure, yeah. uh, language is, is a, a key, key um, cornerstone of culture and trying to preserve that. And the future of that by putting it on the internet is, uh, is a good, a good uh, reason. Um, Last question, I think. Uh, so, do is there any examples of students' um, apps or kind of innovations or any ideas that have been commercialized or any kind of specific su success stories? So, um, one of the examples that uh, of of very um, big success stories would be a student named Ali Griffith, and she is uh, she was a student here in the Music Media Performance Technology Program, and she actually won um, a BAFTA with her team um, for special effects for the TV series The Crown. I don't know if that is very um, popular um, outside, you know, our our uh, our area, but it certainly it's it's a series that's very very popular here. Mm. Um, so that that would be a success story, but but yes, certainly we've had students who actually have gone gone on to to develop these kind of careers. Yeah, yeah, and, and there is a, as I said, there is a support structure within the university um, where we have kind of a, a what's called a, an incubation hub. Uh, if students have um, ideas or concepts or an app that is deemed commercially viable. Uh, they will get support to actually set up a company, you know, um, market market that app or market that product. Um, and we've had a number of, of big um, uh, commercialization projects. So uh, I think the last figure I heard was 135 million euros of, of kind of um, in, inward investment or, or kind of uh, companies being, being uh, floated on stock exchanges and things like that. So it is something that there's a culture of that innovation and, and entrepreneurship uh, within the university as well. Hmm. For sure. Okay, so I think that wraps up our, our presentation. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tabia. I think that was a, a, we'll all agree that was a very informative um, uh, presentation. Thank you to Education in Ireland for, for the opportunity to present uh, on computer science and the University of Limerick. Uh, and thank you for everyone for, for dialing in and appreciate your time and your questions. Như vậy là vừa rồi chúng ta đã cùng nhau lắng nghe bài giảng của cô Tabia De Viel từ trường Đại học Limerick và thầy Liam Ryan từ cũng từ phòng quốc tế của Đại học Limerick. Chắc chắn các bạn cũng đều đồng ý với chị là bài giảng của cô rất hay đúng không? Rất nhiều thông tin bổ ích. À, một lần nữa xin cảm ơn thầy Liam Ryan cũng như cô Tabia De Viel. Education in Ireland Việt Nam cũng cảm ơn tất cả các bạn đã theo dõi bài giảng ngày hôm nay và mời các bạn tiếp tục theo dõi bài giảng tiếp theo vào tối thứ năm tuần tới của National College of Ireland về chủ đề Data Analytics. Các bạn hãy lưu vào lịch để không bỏ lỡ nhé. Còn bây giờ xin chào tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại.